What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioWest 3 Raw TV. I want to kind of throw this out real quick before I head off to the gym to train my clients. I was at the gym today. First of all, we're going to open this up with saying humans are fucking selfish as fuck. Humans are self-centered, selfish, egotistical, and to a certain point, I feel sociopathic, many of them. Now, I want to address PTSD. Now, I myself have a form of anxiety, PTSD, whatever you want to call it, from being molested as a kid from seeing the things that I fucking saw when I was on heroin and stuff like that, which, I mean, you, you do you do get fucked up from that, right? Um, and also from my cousin being killed, um, when I, and it's been like 16 years now or 17 years. Anyways, but it's, bottom line is. And, you know, spending time with Brady absolutely makes everything go away. It makes everything go away. Spending time with Aaron, spending time with Brady, I can sit on that couch and lay there with him and I will not even remember a single fucking thing that happened to me and not stress out about shit. I would love to take him everywhere with me. I'm traveling, the gym, I would love to do that shit. But I also know that bringing your dog into a human world with human rules is not fair to the fucking dog. And I don't give a fuck what anybody says. A lot of people think, Jerry, they need it. I get it. You need, you need, you need. Have you thought about how that fucking dog feels? I watched a guy come today with a, a service dog. And he rolls in with the dog. And the dog's like looking around and stuff. And he goes, sit. And the fucking dog sits. He goes, lay. And the dog lays down next to the cable machine. And he looks up at him with his sad look. Looking for, um, you know, some kind of recognition that he's good. That he's doing something good, right? And the guy's doing his push downs. The dog's like looking around at the people. And people, they, they look at him, but they can't pet him. Right, which means that like that's how dogs know that they're doing good and that they're loved. There's people petting him, paying attention to him. You can't pet him, you can't pay attention to him because he's he's working, he's a service dog. And then the fucking dog's just sitting there like this. And he looks all paranoid, he looks like shit, and then the guy's done, he goes, Okay, up, and the dog stands up and he looks at him, no recognition. Takes the dog to the other fucking machine, goes sit, dog fucking sits, lay, he lays down, he looks at him. The dog spent about an hour and a half inside the gym, being bossed around, moved around, pushed around, and the look on his fucking face was pure sadness it wasn't joy it wasn't enjoyment it wasn't that he was fucking you know being looked at as part of the family and if this guy if this dog really is helping this guy it's better than a fucking drug it's better than a family member it's better than everything and this guy was treating him like he was property like he's like well you'll do this you'll do that i'll be your master i don't look at brady as my dog i'm not his owner he's my family okay he is absolutely aaron and i's fucking family and i would never put him through what these service dogs go through. I watched another guy, okay? This fucking blew my mind. Got on the plane with a German Shepherd, service dog. Stuck the fucking dog under the seat in the, on the fucking window. Under the seat. Made him get under the seat. The dog was all fucking like this. It was a five and a half hour flight coming across country. The guy sitting next to him was a pilot. And he talked to the fucking people up front. There was a guy that wanted to switch with the guy that was in an aisle seat or an um, emergency row that would give the dog plenty of room. The pilot from the plane comes up and says, Sir, someone would like to switch with you. Do you want to switch with him? It'll, it'll make it easier on the dog. And the guy I looked him dead in the eye and said, No, nah, we're settled in now. He's fine. The dog's under the fucking seat now. My backpack fits under the seat. A German Shepherd does not fit under the fucking seat. And this guy was dead serious. He didn't want to get up and move his seat because he'd have to go across the fucking plane and walk. He didn't give a fuck about that dog. And that dog's only fucking purpose was to make him feel better. That's it. He didn't give a fuck if that dog was crammed in a goddamn suitcase and stuck in the overhead bin for the whole flight. Didn't give a fuck. Did not give a fuck. And the pilot actually looked under the scene and said, sir, yeah, we can't let him stay like that. That's, we're not gonna let that. So please switch. And the guy's like, fine. He picks up, and I'm like, he goes, come on. And the dog like fucking commando crawled out from underneath the fucking thing. And, and meanwhile, the whole time doing this, like scared, looking for reassurance, fucking nothing. And I'm like, this is a reoccurring thing with these dogs. Like, it's, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm sure some people absolutely love these dogs and take care of them like they're family members. But so many people out there are fucking entitled being like, well, I have PTSD, so I get a fucking dog. Listen, I get it. But if you have the dog and he's helping you that much, treat him like it's a fucking living thing. Don't treat it like it's a fucking pillow or a teddy bear or a fucking Xanax or whatever the fuck calms you down. It's a living, breathing fucking thing. Did you ever stop to think that maybe it makes you feel better, but what the fuck that animal goes through on a daily fucking basis? How scared it is? How it's out in the open and the only person it can talk to and touch and let pet is you? Animals fucking crave attention. They want to be around people in general, not just you. Your dog doesn't just want to be around you. It wants to be around other fucking dogs. It wants to be around other fucking people. It's wrong. And maybe this is 
a turning point for me where I've always loved my dogs. I've always taken care of my dogs. I had literally like $12 in my fucking account one time. And it was me, Bruno, and Nico. The th me and the two dogs. And I literally went and bought fucking um, Raymond noodles and tuna. That I think it came out to about $4. So I could buy the bag of food for both of them. So they would have enough food to eat. So I think the whole meal for me was like a dollar or two, two and change. Where their meal was like $8 or something for the bag of food. Like I chose to get them their food and suffer rather than them. But these people, they look at the dog, they don't give a fuck. They act like they're entitled. Like the fucking dog should be living for them. Now, granted, dogs pretty much live for their humans. That's what they do. But that doesn't mean you should take advantage of it and not give a fuck. It'd be so fucking sociopathic that you don't give a shit when somebody offers to take your dog out from under that fucking seat when all it does is make you feel better about yourself and fucking help you and you say fucking no? Oh my fucking God. I, w I, I wish I had a fucking mallet. Those ones on Tom and Jerry. I'm gonna bean that motherfucker in the side of his skull for making that poor little fucking guy under... I, I, it still burns my ass to this day. And it's different when I see a real service dog and say, oh, he's so cute. Can I pet him? Yes. Okay, we get down on my hands and knees, pet him, rub his head. The dog is happy. It's happy around the human that, it, you know, is with him. That's cool. But I'm seeing so many of these fucking dogs look absolutely miserable and they're trying so hard. They're trying so hard to do a good job and please their human in, I don't know, you know, well, people that, Jerry, that's how they have to be treated. No, fuck you. That's not how they have to be treated. Okay, these fucking people that have problems with the PTSD and shit, Think that they're fucking should do this. This is the way it should be. This is the way it has to be. No, it's not. I've seen plenty of people out there with PTSD that treat their fucking dogs like they're family. Okay, so don't give me this fucking shit about that's the way it has to be. Fuck that. You're a heartless motherfucker if you stick that dog under the fucking seat for a five and a half hour flight and not give a fuck. That's my opinion and I'll fucking stick it to it. BioSurgeoning at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.bioSurgeoning.com is a blog. It's a love your fucking dog like it's a family member. Bye, bye, And we're out.